All right, so in a brand new 2D Unity project, the first thing we wanna do is import our background. So I'll right click on my assets folder, go to import new asset, and I'll select my space background. Doesn't matter what you use, as long as it's a seamless background, so you can line them up one after another. And the one I'm using, I made in Photoshop, it's 2000 by 1000 pixels, which means if this background's centered and I duplicate it, I know if I add 20 to my duplicated background, then I'll get a seamless transition between the two as I scroll across the screen. And that's actually what our first script's going to be. So I'll right click on assets and create a new C sharp script and we'll call this background scroller. I'll select my two background objects that are lined up and select add component. And the two components we wanna to add to this is the box collider 2D, which I'll then set is trigger to true, as well as a rigid body 2D, which will set the gravity scale to zero because we don't want these falling down from gravity. And we also wanna add this background scroller script we just created. And let's go ahead and open up this script. All right, so the first thing we need are a few variables and we wanna capture those components we just added. So we need a public box collider 2D collider. And we also need a public rigid body 2D RB. We also wanna store the width of the image. So we need a private float width. And we also need a scroll speed for our background to move across the screen. So we need a private float scroll speed. And I'll default this to something like negative 2F. To keep things simple in our start method, we'll get our components. So I'll say collider equals get component of type box collider 2D. And we'll say RB equals get component of type rigid body 2D. Now we wanna get the width of our image using our box collider. So what we can say is width equals collider dot size dot X. And then once we store a reference to this width, we don't need the collider active anymore because it's just going to be calculating collisions and wasting memory. So we can say collider.enabled equals false. And finally, we just want to set the velocity for our background image. So we can say rb.velocity is equal to new vector two of scroll speed in the X and zero in the Y. This will make it so our images just scroll to the left. As our images scroll to the left, we want to reset them back in place so that it scrolls forever. So I'll say if transform.position.x is less than negative width, then we wanna create a new vector two. So vector two reset position equals new vector two of width times two f in the x and zero in the y. And then we'll set the transform.position equal to transform.position plus reset position. And we're gonna have to cast this as vector two. So in parentheses, we could say vector two before transform position. And just like that, you have an infinitely scrolling background. And you'll notice as the background scrolls, as soon as it gets out of frame, it resets itself. So it just keeps looping over and over and over again. At this point, we just need a player and obstacles. So I'm just gonna import the 64 by 64 pixel square and I'll drag it in the scene and call it player. We'll make it blue and I'll set it to negative six and zero. We'll give it a box collider 2D and a rigid body 2D. We'll zero out the gravity again. In our player's rigid body 2D, we can freeze rotation in the Z and also freeze position in the X. And I'll also create a player controller script and then I'll drag that onto the player. We're gonna move quickly through this because I've covered this in multiple tutorials. For variables, we need a rigid body and a move speed. So public rigid body 2D RB and public float move speed. I'll default this to like five. Same as before, RB equals get component rigid body 2D. And then in update, we just want to say float move direction is equal to input dot get access raw in the vertical direction. And then set the RB velocity equal to a new vector two of zero in the X direction and move direction times move speed in the Y direction. And so now you should be able to move up and down. But right now you can go out of frame so I'll create an empty object and call this top wall and just add a box collider 2D and basically just put a collider at the top of the screen. Duplicate this, call it bottom wall and do the same for the bottom of the screen. And now you shouldn't be able to leave the screen. All that's left is an obstacle. So I'm gonna drag this square onto our background and I'll scale it up a little bit. So five in the X, five in the Y. We'll make it red and add a box collider 2D and make sure is trigger is true. And lastly, we'll add a tag, call it obstacle and give it the obstacle tag. I'll then duplicate it and put it under the other background. In our background scroller script, we'll create a new method called void reset obstacle. We just want one line in this saying transform.getchild0. So we're getting the obstacle and saying the local position equal to a new vector three of zero in the X, random range, negative three to three, and zero in the Z. Three is around the top of the camera, negative three is around the bottom of the camera for this object. We can then call reset obstacle at the end of start and the end of our if statement and update. Finally, in our player controller script, we wanna say void on trigger enter 2D. If the other game object.compareTag tag is equal to obstacle, 
then we want to destroy game object. You now have the foundation for an endless runner and can play this infinitely as long as you don't touch one of the red blocks and if you do your player will die. <laughs>